Hey, what is up everyone? So Season 8 brought us the new PvP system, and while the system's been pretty good so far, there have been some problems, particularly with matchmaking. So, in this video we're going to talk about some upcoming changes that are coming to the game, which should be releasing hopefully at the beginning of the new year. So with the whole PvP system, there's a lot of matchmaking queue time that a lot of people have been facing just because of how the system works, and Rare is trying to address that. I honestly was kind of worried about the PvP system kind of dying off once people finished enjoying it and maybe there wouldn't be as good of matchmaking times. I wasn't expecting them to have so many problems so soon, but here's some things that they're going to do to try to fix this. So first, one of the problems they want to address is the imbalance of players between factions. So they've noticed that on any particular day, one side or another has way more players on it playing for that faction as opposed to the other one. So some days you might have nine of the Guardians of Fortune um, on one side, and then you have one Servant of Flame fighting for the other. And then as soon as that pairing is matched, then there's eight Guardians of Fortune compared to zero Servant of Flame. So that's why there's such a huge wait time for any particular faction. If you see that one faction has a shorter wait time than the other, you should definitely take it just to help with that issue. The second issue they want to address is players on different stamps. I don't really want to get into what stamps are, basically just imagine them as different servers. So players are put onto a server and then they can't really leave that server to go to another one. This is something else that they're going to try to address. So next is low population regions. So this is like countries like Japan and Australia that have lower populations of players and this causes longer matchmaking times. There's not much they can do other than maybe extend the range of where you can find people, maybe hop to different servers in the world. But honestly, this is kind of more of a regional problem that I don't know if they're going to be able to fix, but we'll see what they can do. Next, they mentioned that Xbox controller only preference might be an issue, but based on their data, they haven't seen a massive difference in matchmaking times if you have this option change. But if you want to increase your chances, if you're on console, it might help you if you turned on matchmaking for all accounts and not just for Xbox only. And then finally, they said skill based matchmaking hasn't been an issue. Basically, their system for skill-based matchmaking isn't as strict as other games, so if it can't find you a perfect match to start, it will start moving on and expanding its range of who you can face till it can find you an opponent. And then the final thing they want to address is estimated matchmaking times on the Hourglass of Fate. So, what the problem has been for some players is they see that it says like maybe like one to two minutes for matchmaking, and then they're like, okay then it should be within that one to two minutes that they load in. But that typically isn't what's happening. It's often been a lot longer than what the estimated matchmaking time says. And this is gonna be something interesting to see if they can fix. Basically, the way that estimated time works is it's done based on recent matchmaking for other players. That doesn't necessarily mean what's exactly happening right at that moment. So it's of course possible with something like that where a bunch of people are just now playing and then right when you get on, everyone just decides to get off and then there's no one playing, but it's showing the matchmaking time as being great. That's another one I don't know how they're going to fix, but we'll see what they say. So let's get into upcoming improvements to matchmaking times. So first what they're going to do is enable same faction battles. So you might be fighting for the Reapers and then you'll actually be paired up against another Reaper ship. So this does kind of break it for story reasons. They said kind of think of it like a skirmish almost, but it's kind of like a backdoor way to try to fix the problem, but it doesn't really make sense story-wise. I'm okay with it personally, but it will be kind of annoying if you're trying to do accommodations and that kind of stuff, and you're trying to do the ones where you have to fight a certain faction. But in general, I think that is a good plan just to kind of reduce the wait times altogether. It still will prioritize you to fight the other faction, but if they can't find anyone for that, they'll resort to the same faction. Next is cross stamp migration. This is something that they're working on, but they do not currently support in Sea of Thieves. So they're trying to make it so that you can hop between those different stamps in order to reduce this wait time. But that's basically everything you need to know about the upcoming changes that are coming to the game for the PvP system. I think these changes are gonna be really good. I'm looking forward to seeing it. But one other thing I did wanna mention before we end this video is that in last week's update for the adventure, they actually did a slight change to how the PvP faction progression works. And it's kind of a little bit annoying because some of a small minority of players basically ruined it for everyone else. So basically what happened was they increased the amount of allegiance or XP 
you need after level 100 to increase in level for either of the factions. So this is to make it so that people aren't getting to level 1000 rewards super quickly because they want it to be like a long term thing you strive for. So what I meant by that small minority of players ruining it for everyone else was basically you had, you know, the people that you typically expect to do it that I grind out the content at the very beginning of the season and then complain that there's no content two weeks after they finished everything. Basically, you have people that are just grinding out these levels and trying to get to the rewards as quick as possible. And them doing that kind of ruined it for everyone else like me, who just wants to kind of chill and go like a slow pace trying to complete this and not rush to get it done. Now I have to work harder to get to the same level that they are now. Pretty annoyed by that, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. But it's definitely something that I thought y'all would want to know. But that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed, it'd be great if you like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye, y'all.